Greetings all of you, the good tonight here, and today we're going to be doing a video on running packs with your plate carrier. So, plate carriers vary, body shapes, sizes, and everything varies immensely. So, your results may differ, but for myself, just getting a belt that works with my plate carrier was a struggle in and of itself, and then running uh, packs, packs with said plate carrier. So, we opted for the Cry SPC, purpose being it's incredibly lightweight, it's got a structural support system that helps with the uh, weight distribution, uh, distribution, but also is designed for a very lightweight setup. So you don't have a whole lot, you really don't want to run a whole lot on the side so you keep that breathability and you really just got your bare minimum plates. And whatever you're running up here in the uh, magic corner, the magic front, and then the stuff on your belt is pretty standard. So, running packs can be a bit tricky, particularly if you're using older packs. So, there's three packs we got that we're going to be running with our kit today to kind of like get this video going. So before I get too carried away, I'm going to grab a few things. There are a few um, things I had to do to modify the packs to make them more successful. So, we'll start with the pack I'm going to be running the most, and that's going to be the tag. Uh, Combat Sustainment Pack. So this is an interesting little pack here. It's um, a bit dated, and as you can see, it's a very long pack, and we've done a few modifications to it. So this one is a bit of an older design. These have been around for a while, and as you might know, the Cry SPZ, being designed to really just hold that plate, isn't as long or as uh, crazy cumbersome as some of the older packs. So, to fix a bunch of those issues, we need the pack to sit higher, and we need some type of frame support system to help keep the pack from folding in on itself, which we call it to sag and cause all sorts of issues. So, the way we address the... Oh, wait, well, I say we, but really the way I've addressed these issues, through dicking around with a lot of gear, is the first issue was that the uh, pack straps that come with it were way too long. So we swapped them out with the uh, Warrior Salt Systems uh, straps that come with a little hydro carrier. Now these are great because they are stupid padded and mesh vented, so... They're, they're just more comfortable than they have any right to be. But they are a bit shorter, and that plays a large role in making sure that the pack sits up higher. Now, to keep it from folding in on itself, you can see there's something rigid going on in there. There's, a, there's something hard in the pack, and um, <clears throat> it's not what you think it is. So, what we ended up getting was this little piece here. This is Grey Man Tactical. I got this because I thought it'd be an interesting insert. It's not a perfect fit. These are designed for the... Uh, Haley Strategic Flat Packs. But they come in a few different sizes. This one's 8 by 12 and a half. It's, it basically is a little gray flat frame that looks like that. You can mount all sorts of cool kit stuff on there, but really, we just wanted some type of harder skeleton to hold the pack upright. We don't have any cutouts or anything inserted in there, so we're making do with what we have. So, that frame ensures that the uh, pack it doesn't scrunch up and actually has somewhat of a, a degree of flushness to the back of the plate carrier. So if we take this and we throw this on, I do really love this bag by the way. I've struggled with actually being able to use it, which is why I didn't want to get rid of it because it's a fantastic pack. And we're going to tighten those down there. Let's see, we're almost... Yeah, there we go. As you can see we got it sitting up relatively high. We got those tight. We can still clasp these together if we're trying to do any sort of a uh, we want to clip our hydration or something crazy in there but yeah as you can see tight fit but we got the pack sitting up relatively high still got that little bit of shift because there's nothing in the middle of the compartment but the big thing is we're not rubbing against our IFAC everything is well contained we can still we get that little bit of a uh, the pads are the uh, shoulder straps are a bit more padded than we'd expect or particularly like. But again, you've got the quick release buckles from that other strap, so if we need to get rid of this quick, fast, and in a hurry, it is entirely doable. So, with all of that in mind, you have to throw in our rifle here, and as you can see, we can still sight in. You've got the little standard plate issue. That uh, strap is a little bit in the way, but that's kind of to be expected. You're not going to have everything perfect the way you want it to. So if you're out patrolling or doing whatever, and you run to some point of contact, you can still return fire maneuver around and do all the stuff you need to effectively do. And that's good. And you can still access your handgun and do all that cool stuff as well, so. The pack isn't terribly in the way. 
It does add a little bit of weight, but there's very particular reasons why I want the pack on straps so we can get access to it. So we can undo that real quick after we put our weapon down. I'm pretty sure we could do it with the weapon still on if we just sling it around our neck if we really want to. But yeah, so you might be asking yourself, what's the point? Well, we got three extra mags, we, can put a, we got our multi-tool, we got three pouches to fill with whatever we can desire with this main pack, presumably being roughly the size of a claymore, wink. And yeah, right now I've just, you might be asking, well, good tonight, what do you got in there right now? And a whole lot of nunya. Nah, I'm joking. Right now we really just got that frame and a uh, bunch of miscellaneous stuff I'm not particularly using at the moment. But what I would probably do is fill up one pouch with medical, one pouch with extra food and snackies, and then this with whatever miscellaneous gear we might need. Again, claymores. Claymores are fun. We could probably get at least one, maybe two in there, but everything we really want. And it's a comfy pack. So worst case scenario, you get to the end of the day and you've got yourself a very nice pillow. Probably don't sleep on a claymore, but you get the idea, so. Fantastic pack, and I'm glad it's still viable today. So that's the modifications we had to make to make sure we could still use it. It's super comfortable, and all it's really missing is a hydro. I have a bunch of the long reservoirs from Camelback, and I need to get a couple of short ones, because the short ones will actually fit in here, the long ones are just, well, too long. And I also gotta do something it's kind of a ghetto modification to have that frame in there, but it works. And if it's stupid, it works well. So, next up, and less used, is the Warrior Assault System a Hydro Carrier. Which, as you may remember, this is what we stole the straps off of because we swapped them out with these pig straps. Now, the pig straps were what I was. Uh, ah, pff, back in English today, the pig straps are what I was initially going to use on the tag pack, but they are absurdly long so this bag's a bit shorter on the plus side not terribly but we could throw that on there let me see where are we at uh, yeah this one doesn't have a structured frame or anything in there but the design of the pack itself varies just enough from the uh, tag pack that actually sits quite nicely so again I mentioned in the last video I did with the different head covers CSGO vibes and this is literally a very, very CSGO vibe pack. Now, this is designed to fit on more of your LBT, or, yeah, LBT 6094s and larger ones that have eight rows of pals. But as you know, with the uh, Cry one, we've got six. So having the uh, tighter straps and everything to sit up there. Ultimately, the spacing between the uh, straps uh, where the, they connect to the pack is what makes the whole difference as to why the uh, pig straps, unfortunately, do not work on the tag bag but work fantastic on the Warrior Salt Systems bag. So, what's great about the uh, Warrior Salt Systems bag is it's designed in a very modular salt pack design, so it's very low profile, lightweight. Again, it barely fits the long uh, Camelback reservoirs, so we need to use a uh, short one. So when those get in, we'll be running those again, but it's comfy, you got the compression straps, so everything sits together. It's a very easy pack to use, so this one is easily my second favorite. If we don't need compartmentalized uh, sustainment stuff and we just need like say water, some light pack, maybe a few little tools, it's a different variation that lets us carry very much the same stuff. Now it does have clips up here at the top that we've rigged these into, and you got clips down here at the bottom. So you got two points of contact to remove your uh, shoulder straps from if need be. But again, another fantastic pack. So, before we move on to the, well, actually, you know, I'll just get to it. So the third pack, we managed to get ourselves one of the Philby Marine packs. Now this is, this is a big bag. Again, filled with a whole bunch of Nunya, because we really just want to make sure the pack even works. So what's cool about this pack is that despite its monolithic size, we can still strap those down. Straps are more or less out of the way. We can still, we're still going to have a bit, it's less padding, but still su sufficient padding. So we can still, uh, throw this on. I didn't do it for the last one, but it wasn't that special, so. Now we got big old pack. And we actually got less interference than with the uh, tag pack, but we're still able to get on the gun and get stuff done. Drop up in here, now we're going to test my theory. You can pull those off, yeah, there you go, you have access to the pack and its contents without 
removing your rifle. Neat! So, you can carry a whole bunch of stuff that you might need for extended operations, i.e. Marine Corps wise. So you can have your Gore-Tex and a bunch of water and food and all the crazy, crazy stuff you might need in this pack. Now, this one, I'm pretty sure, will hold a long... It might not, actually. I think they all need short cattlebacks. Uh, financial investments, but hydration is key. Like Camelback says, hydrate or die. And I'm uh, not a fan of being dead, so I guess we're going to be hydrating. Speaking of Camelback and hydration, look at my mandatory sipping. It's hot. Oh boy, I'm in an air-conditioned building, it's a lot. But it is June in Okinawa, so welcome to the party. So, lastly, the pack we're not really using is the pack actually designed to be used with the play carrier. And I did a video on it not too long ago, but it is our actual Cry Pack Zip-On Panel 2.0. Now the problem is that the way you see I have the uh, small cover bun, small, small cover bun, Cry, listen, small cover bun, I should be wearing a medium. I've got this thing looped over and ghetto rigged so it fits. And that's kind of an issue everyone ran into. A lot of people got mediums and haha, -ha, way too long. Um, now you got, everyone's got to buy smalls. So, this is a cool idea, but it violates a few key principles. First principle is you always want to have shoulder straps so you can take it off. So you can sit in a vehicle and have your pack on your lap. Oh cool, that Velcro works. Nice. So you can sit in a vehicle and have your pack up forward and do your stuff so when you get out you can actually throw your pack on. It lets you get access to your pack. This requires you to have your friend do all the work getting in and out of your pack. But the problem with the way I've got that cover bun ghetto rigged is that there is not a lot of give here and these magazine pouches are built in. So because of that, that forces this up higher and in theory, using this dummy replica plate as our example, that's the back of the plate carrier, this should sit exactly like that with the magazine pouches sitting underneath the plate. In theory. I didn't design the plate, so that's what I would assume is the goal. But because of the added girth of the um, cover bun, the mag pouches end up sitting out there, and it ends up putting this little bit of a twist to the pack, which doesn't sound terrible, but that means the magazines are out farther from your body. Now you've got a little bit of sway, and sway is not okay. Because that's going to make you exhausted having that gear move around. But more importantly, you're adding the weight directly into the pack, which is then adding the weight directly onto the back plate. Now, if you've never worn real plates before, this is problematic. Even with the structural support, which is nice, this might be far less of an issue with an AVS where you actually have like the whole full structural port support system. But with that pack, that's going to push your lower plate back down, which is going to in turn pull your front plate up. And if you've never been choked out in a non-erotic manner by your plate carrier, then uh, yeah, it is an issue to consider. So now you're going to have that extra weight up on your neck, your plate carrier is going to be constantly shifting against you, whereas now I'm actually using the extra weight of the magazines and everything to pull the front plate down a bit more, because the back plate's more or less okay, and it keeps everything aligned on the structural cover bun. So you're not able to access anything. Um, anything you put in there is extra weight that's going to pull down on your back plate and in turn potentially choke you. And yeah, you can't access it. You want to be able to access your stuff. Not terribly often with the uh, tag pack, being able to take this on and off gives us access to our magazines, any tools that we might need. So you can throw this off real quick, get your stuff, throw it right back on and be on the move. Or if you're going to be conducting stuff, you can stage it somewhere and it's out of the way entirely. You now have less weight and stuff you're carrying, and particularly if you have a camelback in there, then between donning and doffing your pack, you'll be able to drink a bunch of water and stay hydrated. With that one, all that extra water is going to also pull down, so that's like three liters of water is three kilograms, that's 6.6 .6 pounds. So like an extra load out of magazines and water alone now doing one of these motions. So, there are people who can use it. I'm sure it works a lot better with an AVS where the whole frame harness system helps uh, keep that weight from pulling down, but if you're running a JPC or something far more minimalistic, you're going to want to be able to get packs off pretty easily. So, 
That's all I really had for you guys with those three main packs. There are a bunch of different packs and play carriers and physical builds of people to take into consideration. But <laughs> having my own unique build going on here where it was a struggle just to get a belt running because the play carrier would always rub up against it until we went far more minimal, which is why I like this uh, two pals wide instead of three because the three would always be all up on my stuff and without the structural support, it was just a night to begin with. So. That's everything to consider if you want to run an SPC with a somewhat similar build to me if you have similar issues or if you had similar issues I hope this video is helpful to you. The whole reason I make these videos is so that you don't go through the same nightmare I do and potentially at a far younger healthier stage in your life you're smarter than me and those who have come before us so you can be more effective and use that youth to your maximum advantage. So, hope that all helps. If you have any questions, hit me up. I'll do the best I can to help you out from there. But yeah, the general principle for packs is you want to be able to access them. And yeah, if you're going to be getting in and out of vehicles, you need to be able to get access to them, take them on and off. So, bunch of considerations. Things may change down the road, so we'll see what happens. But cheers, everyone. Stay chivalrous. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.